Hey everybody, how's it going? So a question that I get really often is, where do I start? How do I start? I want to do something similar to what you do, Lewis. How do I start? Or I'm not really sure what I should be doing with my life. I just know I want to do something in tech or whatever. Where do I start? So I'm going to give you the, my, I guess my answer to this question and then the reality answer to this question. I guarantee you it's not going to be what you want to hear. I guarantee it's not going to be what you were looking for, but it is indeed the honest answer. And it is something that my dad had explained to me early on, but I didn't really understand it. And now that I'm into my early 30s, I understand what he meant. So how do you get started? How do you how do you do what I do? Well, what you do is you spend a lot of time on hydrogen audio and so you know like forums like Axiom Audio, and you get really interested in why different codecs uh, you know work the way they do, but also why different loudspeakers sound the way they do. And eventually you get to be interested in why different albums sound differently, even if they're made by the same band playing the same instruments. So you decide, I want to be an audio engineer because I'm interested in why different loudspeakers sound different. But because you're a teenager and you're so much of an idiot, you don't even know the difference between audio engineer as in loudspeaker designer and audio engineer as in somebody who records and mixes music for a living. So you get an internship at a studio after typing audio engineer into Google and it's a small kind of crappy studio where but you you start working on sessions there, you work your way up to working on sessions after fixing up stuff in the rehearsal room and doing all the crap work that interns usually do. You get a job at a larger studio because you realize that this smaller studio is kind of a dump and you're not really going to go where much any place with it. And you realize that you don't get along with the hipsters that are working as assistant engineers and as production assistants. It's just there's a difference in culture between you and the New York City and the Williamsburg and the Bushwick hipsters. And you just, for some reason, in spite of how nice you try to be and kind and cordial, you just come off as weird, maybe Asperger's this, and you just, they'll let, they laugh at you and you just don't get along. But you get along really well with the people that work in the tech room who are more of the, you know, the kind of 50 year old Italian plumber types. And you get along with them really well. And you, you start interning in the tech room, you learn from them. You get really good at it, but you realize that you're not really going to, there's not really much room to climb at the large place as there is in the smaller place because one of the people there making $12 an hour is over 10 years older than you with a college degree. You go back to the small place and you realize that a lot of people are not really coming to you for advice on audio recording or anything like that. They're not, injured, but that anytime something doesn't work in that smaller studio, people are constantly coming to you and you just naturally are the first one running to fix technical problems when a mixer is not working, a speaker is not working, uh, any sort of device there is not working and that becomes kind of your role. But you were still interested in the music recording part of it. You're just still kind of curious about it. So you work on sessions with someone there who can't afford to pay one of the real audio engineers that's not just an intern. And the place winds up closing down in 2008. So you not only did you lose your potential to work on text-related stuff, but you also lost your potential to work on sessions. You still want to work on sessions with this guy. You're not really sure what the hell you're doing with your life at this point. So you try to get a job as a health insurance salesman. You get certified in health insurance sales. And after you get certified in health insurance sales, you realize that the entire health insurance industry is a giant scam and that the people there treat customers like shit and that you don't really want to do cold calls and just randomly show up to places. You show up to one place with way too much gel in your hair, your hair combed back, and your Staten Island Guido suit, and when someone asks you, what are you selling, you say drugs and protection with your Staten Island accent on, thinking that you're so slick, and yeah, long story short, you, didn't, you don't sell any health insurance. So you go back to working on sessions for this one person, but you, you need an Apple product to do it, because all of the sessions are in Logic. So you buy one on eBay, and it comes broken. And you figure, well, I mean, surely I can fix this thing. I mean, I work on stuff regularly. Let me get a discount from the seller. I got my discount from the seller. And you fix it. And then you realize, wait a second, this is worth like four Four hundred dollars more now. Now that I fixed it, I spent fifty-eight bucks fixing this. Huh? I just lost. I've never had a real job. I just lost my internship, where I would make anywhere from free to ten dollars an hour, depending on when I was working. Um, let's try that again. You sell the computer when you don't need it to do the session anymore, when you're not working with that person, you make some money. And then you realize, oh crap, this may actually be a way out of poverty. So you get excited and you try it again. You buy some parts, you buy another machine, and you continue doing this. You eventually get screwed because you buy something that's way more damaged than the seller said, losing your profits from the prior four to six buys and resells. But you realize that... You, you, what you could do is you could just offer this as a service to other people using the feedback that you got from having good feedback from selling things. So you just call up a couple of other places, see the prices they charge, the service they have, the amount of time they take, and you realize, wow, out of my crappy Tyson's Lane, shitty New Dorp apartment, I could actually offer better service than these places if I just stock the part. I'm just not greedy, and I'm actually willing to put up a little bit of money. So you do that, and you pedal along for a few years, and you make you know a few sometimes a few hundred dollars a week, sometimes a thousand a week, sometimes fifteen hundred a week, sometimes a hundred a week, sometimes minus 500 in a week, and you piddle paddle along, 
And then you meet someone who is working at a competing shop that you don't particularly get along with, who it just so happens to wear an ankle bracelet and may be on his way to prison soon. But he's kind of, he's kind of an interesting dude. He kind of has a lot of, you know, he has a lot of cool ideas. And he's a very, very eccentric, very, very eccentric, interesting person. And he suggests that you buy some display assemblies from some random dude in China. You buy the parts to build them and then you resell them. It may be a good business. And you get into doing that. But then that, that guy who you just met through this other guy says, hey, I fix boards too, by the way. Maybe you just want to offer this to customers if your ultrasonic cleaner doesn't work. So we send them a few, you know, kind of feeling like, okay, I'm not really sure this is this seems kind of shady. And he actually fixes a couple of them. But as the years go by, he kind of sucks at it. And he screws up more and more and more. So you decide, listen, there's no way in hell I'm dumber than the people that are doing this work. I, I refuse to accept that. If that's true, I'm just, no, I'm not waking up in the morning. So you you start, you try and figure out how to do it yourself, and you piddle paddle around, and uh, you fail repeatedly for about two to three years. But one day, you figure out that you only have access to the schematic, not the schematic and the board view. And once you figure out how to get access to the schematic and the board view, it's like an epiphany. It's like, wow, wait a second. So this goes to that document? Wow, now I know where everything is. Oh my God, this is amazing. And you start learning and you stay up until four or six in the morning every single day and you start sharing all the stuff that you're learning as you're learning it with people on YouTube just for the hell of it, just for fun because you've been doing this weird YouTube channel. And then with a few years later, you, have, you, you wind up becoming known as the best known person for board repair in the United States, in spite of the fact that you had told your parents right before starting that internship when they asked you, hey, would you like to work on electronics or fixed computers? Quote, I'd rather kill myself than fix people's broken stuff for a living. I was being edgy. I was being a dumbass 16 year old, but that's what I told people when they would say, this is what you should consider doing for a living. What's my point here? What's the real answer? What's the real answer for you? I can't tell you how to start makes no sense. Where you, you, wherever you start, that's probably not going to be where you, where you end up. You have to take, make a journey to figure out where you fit into the world. You're not going to know where you fit in the world, and where you think you fit into the world is probably not where you actually fit into the world. You fit into the world when you can feel a sense of purpose because what you do makes people happy, is something that wasn't being done properly beforehand, but now is being done properly because of you, and other people notice and benefit from it. Whatever that is, is going to be what you enjoy doing, what you get the, no, where you are putting the most value into the world, what gives you a feeling of purpose, that's going to be what you most likely wind up doing with your life. How do you start? I have no idea. I mean, I, I started working at this dumpy laptop repair place on 35th Street. I worked there for four days and I quit because it was horrible. And I said, screw it, I'll try my own company. And like, maybe you'll work at a company. To, and then you'll start getting really good and, and you'll start making a good salary. Or maybe you won't and you'll go off on your own. Maybe you'll start doing this as a business out of your apartment. Maybe you'll take a class. Maybe you'll start watching YouTube videos. Maybe you'll do all of the above and then realize this is really not what you want to do. You want to be a psychiatrist and you'll go back to school for that. What you need to do and what most people need to do is get rid of this idea that there is a linear path to whatever they want to do in life. Because for many different things, there is not a linear path. And what makes people feel comfortable, what made me feel comfortable when I was a teenager was the idea that there was a linear path. I wanted to do something where I'm going to put in this much training, then I will get this job at 10, then 15, then 20, then 25, then 30, then 35, then I will retire at this age. That's what made me feel good. What made me feel insane levels of stress, lots of cortisol, what I wanted to avoid at all costs was an open-ended life. An open-ended life was the scariest thing that could possibly happen. Because how do you know if you're going to make any money? How do you know if you're going to live indoors? How do you know when you'll be able to afford to buy a house? How do you plan? How do you know if any, How do you know how anything is going to happen? If you don't have a very specific plan, I will start by doing this, then one month later I will do that, then one month later I will do that, the world don't work that way. It genuinely doesn't work that way. And my dad had to explain this to me many times when I was a teenager. He said, you are going to spend years and years plotting through the world because you've chosen not to go to college. I understand and respect why you don't want to go to college, but don't think that things are going to be easy. Don't think you're going to have some sort of specific little spelled out plan. You are going to spend years busting your ass, doing things to try and figure out where your place in the world is. The one important thing here is that you actually spend time in the world doing things so that you could figure out where your place in the world is. Whatever you wind up doing, is going to have value, but it's going to have value not in terms of I worked here to make this money at this time or I worked here to learn this thing at this time, but rather because it will tell me where my per place is in the world, where I can offer uh, a, sen a sense of value to other people, and where I feel my greatest sense of purpose is because I feel like what I'm doing is actually contributing to the well-being of the world while simultaneously also allowing me to make a living for myself. That I'm going to have to really explore around and try to find where that is. And there's no way in hell that you can expect 
that if you speak to a guidance counselor when you're 16, that you're just going to create a little plan for your life and it's going to work. It's probably going to lead to you being pissed off at your career when you're in your late 20s, late 30s and want to do something else entirely or feeling like you missed out on something. You need to plot around and you're going to be plotting around for a really long period of time. But as long as you're not sitting on your ass at home, it's worth it. Whether you're volunteering, whether it's a shitty job, whether it's a shitty internship, whatever it is that you're doing, as long as you're doing something out there, you will figure out what does and doesn't work for you. You'll figure out where you fit in. You'll figure out what your identity is. You'll figure out what you're good and bad at, what other people value in you versus don't value in you. You'll know if you're being honest with yourself when you're genuinely getting better at something versus just banging your head against the wall at something that you suck at, and you'll eventually figure out where you fit in. All the contacts that I made, all of the, the all of those little things that occurred that got me to where I am now were completely random. A guy deciding that it's actually cheaper to be able to work with an intern and just pay him in beer because he's underage and can't legally buy liquor or whatever to work with him instead of working with someone else. I had to be there in order to have that situation occur where I needed to buy a MacBook when that studio closed so that I could continue working from. Had I not bought that MacBook, I would have never gotten into this industry. Getting into this industry was an accident. Had I not went to that other shop and spoken with the guy that I was selling screens to and really like started to kind of develop a relationship with him by just you know talking about things unrelated to our transaction just to make small talk, I would have never learned about the display assembly idea that he had. I would have never learned that the person he was working with was, uh, was an asshole. And we would have never went next door to have a talk for 45 minutes, get some drinks, shoot the shit. I would have never gotten access to that one vendor. I would have never spoken to that vendor about board repair. I would have never had the bad experience with that vendor about board repair that led me to decide I'm going to do it myself, but I also may have never offered that as a service. Now, what I get out of each one of these things, that relationship, that particular relationship didn't go very well. It ended poorly. However, it helped me get to where I am. That recording studio thing, I could see that internship as me getting paid jack shit. I probably didn't make more than two or $3,000 over the course of the time that I worked there. I could see that as a lot of time I put in my life in my early years when I could have been partying and making friends and doing other stuff and a total waste of time, but I don't see it that way. I see that two years that I put in in that particular place was all leading up to that one moment where I bought a MacBook because I I would have never bought a MacBook otherwise, I assure you. From the age of like seven onwards, I had the outlook towards Apple I do now. But anyway, I digress. The, uh, I, had, I would have never bought a MacBook if it wasn't for doing that one session with that one person who was using me because I was cheap who I met at that facility. That one contact that led me down this one little path in life was worth that two years that I spent there. Go, learning uh, from working at Avatar and all the things that I learned while I worked at Avatar that taught me that, uh, that where I feel my place in the world is, is in being able to fix things that other people can't fix, that taught me that that is where my, that is what I identify as. That's what I enjoy doing. When I, when I think of myself, when I look in the mirror, I'm the person that can solve a problem with a piece of hardware in a room when nobody else can, and by doing that, I can make them happy. Being able to do that is what motivates me. It's what gives me a little kick of dopamine, and it's what I'm going to enjoy doing. I'm not going to enjoy studying uh, for chemistry regions until 1 or 2 in the morning. I'm not going to enjoy studying history in college. I'm not going to enjoy you know, going through pre-calculus, but where I'm willing to put in 14 or 15 hours a day into learning nonstop constantly is if I can solve a problem on a particular piece of hardware that someone else can't solve, and by doing that, I can make others happy. That's what I figured out. So that was a learning experience. That too, that many years that I wasted were not wasted because it got me there. Now, if I had in my head what I want to do is become a logic board repair person, would I have went down that path that got me there? Or I wanted to be, I don't know what it is I want to do. I just want to do something in engineering. Probably not. You kind of need to spend time in the world to find your place in it. And what I find happens a lot nowadays is that people will get a degree in a particular topic. And if they're not able to find a job in that particular topic, they won't do anything at all because it's beneath them. I will not be a phone customer support person. I will not work building furniture at the Staten Island Mall. I will not work at 3P Delivery, you know, typing in addresses and orders for Lowe's. I will not work at some crappy studio in the film center building when I want to be a great technician at some shitty rehearsal studio. But the thing, it's not about the job that you do at the shitty rehearsal studio. It's about the relationships that you make. It's about that one random meeting in the hallway where you'll meet somebody and have a conversation that will set you down a path that will set you up for life that you could never possibly plan for or imagine happening that will never happen if you were sitting at home because, quote, that's not worth my time.
You need to go out there in the world to find your place. And piddle paddling around for one year or two years or three years probably sounds like something that's not very fun. It probably sounds more fun to sit home and play a video game. It probably sounds more fun to sit home and watch all reruns of 24 or Game of Thrones or House of Cards. House of Cards is actually pretty good. I never finished it, so I, I probably should do that soon. Mr. Clinton agrees since he just jumped on the chair. Mr. Clinton, good boy. But what you have to do, you what you have to be willing to do is piddle-paddle around for a while and just try something. If you're doing nothing, literally anything you could do is better than doing nothing. Even if you don't feel that what it is you're doing is going to get you somewhere, even if you can't draw a line between a, your, the, where you want to be and where you are now, whatever you end up doing is going to get you involved in the world. And as long as you're involved in the world, you'll be one step closer to finding purpose than if you're not. You just got to go out there and try random different shit. And it's hard. And like, it's weird because I thought that my dad was full of it as a teenager. I thought that this was just, you know, this was garbage and that he was just telling me this so that I wouldn't feel like a failure so that, you know, like, so that he could tell other people that his son wasn't a failure because I felt like a failure while I was spending over a year and a half barely making minimum wage, uh, you know, like doing all of the, the bitch work and the crap work at some of these crappy jobs and crappy places. But he was right. He was 110% correct that as long as I'm out there and I'm doing something that I'll figure out where I fit in and I'll find my purpose. But if I come up with this very specific written down plan with exactly how everything's going to go, I mean, you can do it, but it's never going to work out that way. And, and as long as you don't consider you're like, I'm too good to do this. I'm too good to do that. I'm too good to do this. You know, you may be too good to do that. And I don't think I was, but I may think that I was too good to clean a toilet at a recording studio. I may think that I was too good to do whatever I was doing at, that, at some of these jobs or at the studio. But that got me to where I was. That taught me where my purpose was. It taught me that, okay, sitting here and doing sessions, that's not it. Being a loudspeaker engineer, that's not it. Being a health insurance salesman. That's not it. Uh, taught me all the things, like the things that I were good at and the things that I were bad at and why. And I was able to combine all those skill sets and have them finally intersect at a point that I was actually good at something. So your question, where do I start? What do I do? Anything. Literally anything. If you want to start fixing a MacBook, buy a MacBook. Watch the videos. Or go to a repair shop. See if they'll give you a job. Or start your own repair facility. I don't know. Again, if you're, if you're looking for like a specific path to success, you ain't going to find it here. I have no idea how to tell you how to find your sense of purpose or your path to success because mine was a complete accident. And the person that told me that when I finally found my place in the world, it would be through this series of random accidents, I wouldn't have believed him. But my dad just told me, you know, just don't give up. Listen, whatever you're doing, as long as you don't sit at home all fucking day and sit in front of a computer doing nothing, you have a chance of finding a purpose in the world. So go do it. Don't sit here all day. Don't do shit all day. And that, that helped me because there were times where I really just kind of did want to sit home and do nothing because I was depressed and aggravated that I wasn't getting where I needed to go, that I that I had ideas on where I wanted to be and I wasn't there yet. And, he, you know, he would just say, yeah, just, you know, go do something. Go get an internship. Go volunteer. Go get a shitty job. Whatever the fuck it is you're doing. You'll five years from now, you'll put together where you, you fit in the world. And it doesn't have to be there. But you're not going to find it if you sit here and do nothing. So where do you start? Literally anywhere but sitting, asking where do you start. Probably the least helpful video I've ever done, but that's my answer. You probably don't like it, but that's my answer. Something that's really important to understand here is that there is no specific place to start to get into doing what we're doing because what we're doing is something that we're not even supposed to be doing to begin with. This entire industry is not supposed to exist. The manufacturers do not provide you with the parts, the manuals, the schematics, or the diagrams to work on these products. When I try to get access to the chips and parts that I need, I go to the company that makes them, and the company that makes them says, you're not allowed to have these. There is no specific path to getting into our industry, because our industry is not even supposed to exist. You're going to have to make your and forge your own path, and that is going to require a lot of plotting around, a lot of experimentation, and it's not going to have a specific start, a specific middle, and a specific end. And that's something that you're going to have to be okay with if you want to do what we do. See you later. Bye now.